Dear students, our next lecture is dedicated to anatomophysiological features of kidneys and urinary tract and semiology of kidneys and urinary tract diseases. Objectives of our lecture are recall anatomy and physiology of kidney and urinary tract, to learn examination of patients with urinary system diseases such as objective and subjective examination, and also to learn the possibilities and diagnostic value of supplementary examination methods. Main functions of the urinary system include filtration and excretion of metabolic waste products and foreign chemicals as urea, creatinine, uric acid, regulation of extracellular fluid volume, osmolarity and electrolyte concentrations, regulation of acid-base balance, secretion, metabolism, and excretion of hormones and gluconeogenesis. <clears throat> this slide represents a set of organs of urinary system, which include the kidney, renal, pelvis, ureters, bladder, and urethra. The kidneys are located in the retroperitoneal space of, at both sides of the vertebral column. The right is situated a little bit lower than the left between the transverse processes of the T12L3 vertebra. The kidney about 150 grams and about 10-12 centimeters in length and 5-7 centimeters in width. And briefly about the general organization of kidneys and urinary tract, each kidney contains hilum through which passes uh, renal artery, uh, vein, lymphatics, nerve, and ureter. The major regions of kidney are cortex and medulla. The medulla is divided into 8 to 10 renal pyramids. Pyramids terminate in the papilla and papilla projects into the renal pelvis. Renal pelvis is divided into major calyces that divide into minor calyces. Calyces collect urine from the tubules of papilla. The walls of calyces, pelvis, and ureter contain contractile elements and they propel the urine toward the bladder. Structural and functional unit of kidney is nephron. Every kidney consists of one million nephrons, where the major renal processes, filtration, reabsorption, secretion, and excretion of urine takes place. Nephron is consist of 10 parts Afferent arteriole, glomerulus, Bowman's capsule, afferent arteriole, the proximal convoluted tubule, descending limb of loop of Henle, loop of Henle, ascending limb, distal convoluted tubule, which is open into the collecting duct. Kidney accept blood via renal artery, which enters the kidney through the hilum and branches into the interlobular arteries, arculate arteries, interlobular arteries, afferent arterioles, and which lead to the glomerular capillaries. The distal ends of the capillaries of each glomerulus on the way out from the afferent arteriole, as is shown in this picture, which leads to the second capillary network and the peritubular capillaries. They surround the proximal and distal tubules as well as the loop of Henle, where they are known as a vasorecta. The specialized capillary network and is very important for concentrating urine. The vasorecta capillaries are long and hairpin shaped. They run parallel to loops and their turns slow the rate of the blood flow, which helps maintain the osmotic gradient required for the water reabsorption. And this system is known as the countercurrent exchange. In the kidney, blood flow is regulated by a mechanism called tubular glomerular feedback, and it is controlled by the juxtaglomerular apparatus, or JGA. This is the specialized region associated with the nephron but separated from it. The JGA is located between the ascending limb and the afferent arteriole and contains three components. As it's shown in this picture, macula densa, 
juxtaglomerular cells and extraglomerular mesangial cells. This apparatus produces and secretes into the circulation enzyme renin. Renin is produced when the renal blood flow is reduced. Renin converts angiotensin to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is subsequently converted into angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictive peptide that causes blood vessels to narrow, resulting in uh, increasing blood pressure. Angiotensin 2 also stimulates secretion of the hormone aldosterone from the adrenal cortex. Aldosterone causes renal tubules to increase the reabsorption of sodium and water into the blood, the while at the same time causing the excretion of potassium. This increases the volume of extracellular fluid in the body and which also increases blood pressure. The four mechanisms result to convert blood to urine. They are filtration, their absorption, secretion and excretion. Filtration occurs in glomerulus and is largely passive. Uh, it depends on the intracapillary blood pressure. As it's shown in this picture, the differences between the high hydrostatic pressure in the glomerular capillaries, relatively low hydrostatic pressure in Bowman's capsule, and low oncotic, low oncotic pressure. And this causes the rapid fluid filtration. Normally, the only components of blood that are not filtered in Bowman's capsule there are blood proteins and blood cells. 99% of water in that filtrate is reabsorbed. The absorption occurs in the renal tubules and either passive due to diffusion or active due to pumping against the concentration gradient. Secretion also occurs in the tubules and it is active process. By adjusting the resistance of afferent and efferent arterioles, the kidney can regulate the hydrostatic pressure in both glomerular and peritubular capillaries. By changing the rate of glomerular filtration and tubular reabsorption, uh, some of the hormones also signal the tubules to uh, alter the reabsorption or secretion rate and thereby they maintain homeostasis. These hormones are antidiuretic hormone, aldosterone, parathyroid hormone, and atrial natriuretic peptide. Very brief about innervation of kidneys. The kidney innervation is realized by the renal plexus and fibers course along the renal arteries to the each kidney. Uh, input from the sympathetic nervous system triggers vasoconstriction in the kidney and thereby it's reducing the renal blood flow and uh, increased renal tubular sodium reabsorption. The kidney also receives parathympathetic innervation by the renal branches of the vagus nerve and the sensory input from the kidney travels to the T10, T11 levels of the spinal cord and this is uh, sensed in the corresponding dermatome and thus uh, the pain in the flank region may indicate the problems in the corresponding kidney. The next part of our lecture is examination of patients with urinary system diseases. This slide represents examination methods of patient. Uh, I think uh, the, everyone is very well familiar with uh, this outline. Examination starts with history taking and then assessment of the patient status, including visual examination, palpation, percussion, auscultation, and anthropometry. Uh, then making idea about the preliminary diagnosis and then sending patient to the investigations, to laboratory and instrumental examinations and making the final diagnosis. The patients with 
urinary system disease may have the following symptoms as pain, disorders of urination, edema, vomiting, nausea, loss of appetite, fatigue and weakness, sleep disorders, chest pain, pain in the heart region, high temperature, muscle cramps, persistent itching, shortness of breath, headache and change in urine color. But it should be remembered that uh, some diseases of the kidney may also proceed without any symptoms of renal or general clinical insufficiency. Pain is the most common symptom of the urinary system uh, diseases and localization, the radiation, character, duration, severity, onset, relieving factors, aggravating conditions and accompanying symptoms must be considered. Pain of renal origin localizes frequently in the lumbar region. If the ureters are affected, the pain is felt by the course, and if the bladder is involved, the pain is suprapubical. Uh, radiation of the perineal region is specific for uh, kidney stones, and the pain receptors are absent in the uh, renal tissue and the pain is felt when the capsule or, or the pelvis are distended. This, is, this pain character is usually dull and boring and this is also specific for abscess of the perirenal uh, cellular tissue. Also in heart decompensation for congestive kidney. Pain arises due to distension of the renal capsule because of the inflammatory uh, or congestive swelling of the renal tissue. Uh, onset gives also um, very important information about the genesis of the pain. Sharp and suddenly developing pain on the side of the loin uh, can due to the renal infarction. Some patients complain of attacks of uh, severe acute piercing pain in the lumbar region. Uh, by the course of the ureters. The pain increases periodically and then subsides and has the character of renal colic. Abstraction of the ureter by a calculus or its mm, bending in movable ki uh, kidney is the most common cause of this pain. And about the uh, relieving conditions, uh, patients with renal colic um, who has the renal the kidney stones they are restless they toss in bed and cannot find the relieving uh, uh, posture they cannot find the pores which relieve their pain and patients with severe pain or other etiologists uh, would usually lie quiet in the beds and uh, because movements may intensify the pain the conditions which provoke uh, the pain should be established. For example, pain in kidney stones can be provoked by the jolting motion. It is also necessary to establish the agent that lessens or removes the pain. For example, it may be atropine sulfide or the hot bottle or warm bath. Uh, these, uh, these conditions they help in renal colic. In some patients, uh, for example, in movable kidney, the changing the patient posture, uh, it releases the pain because urine outflow uh, improves with displacement of the kidney. And this slide demonstrates differentiation of pain depending on the origin. Common symptoms for many renal disease are disorders of urination. The change in daily volume of excreted urine, uh, circadian rhythm of urination, and change in the frequency of urination. Secretion of urine during a certain period of time is called diuresis. Diuresis can be positive when the amount of urine excreted exceeds the volume of uh, liquid taken or negative when the volume of liquids taken exceeds the volume of urine excreted. Negative diuresis is observed in cases of liquid retention in the body or its excess uh, excretion through the skin or, or by lungs, for example, in dry and hot weather. And positive diuresis occurs in resolution of edema after administration of diuretics uh, and in some other cases. 
increased amount of excreted urine is called polyuria. Uh, when the uh, volume of urine is more than two liters a day, polyuria may be a result of the mm, taking much liquid in normal condition, normal cases, or during resolution of edema in patients with cardiac or kidney diseases, and after taking diuretics. Polyuria also uh, occurs in the absence of sensitivity of tubules uh, to antidiuretic hormone, and, and also in other types of diabetes insipidus, in diabetes mellitus as well. In uh, severe uh, renal diseases also. In this case, uh, the gravity of urine is low and is called hypostenuria. This is a symptom of uh, renal disease such as uh, chronic nephritis, chronic pyonephritis, and uh, renal atherosclerosis. Oliguria is a decrease in daily urinary volume to 500 milliliters. It can be a consequence of uh, deficient blood supply of the kidney. And this is the extra renal oliguria, for example, in uh, shock, uh, severe reduction in renal function, and uh, diseases of the urinary tract, and is called renal oliguria. Oliguria can be found in normal condition as well. It can be due to limited intake of uh, liquids during staying in uh, hot uh, places and dry places, in excessive sweating, intense vomiting, in profuse diarrhea, and during decompensation of uh, cardiac patients. Anuria is decrease in daily urinary volume to less than 50 milliliters which can cause death in persisting for several days with possible development of a urinia. Anuria may be caused by disorders of secretion of urine by the kidneys. In this case, uh, it is called secretory anuria, which occurs in severe form of acute nephritis, nephrosclerosis, in transfusion of incompatible blood and also some general diseases such as severe heart failure and uh, profuse hemorrhage and shock. In other cases, the secretion of urine is normal, but its excretion is uh, obstructed mechanically, and this is uh, called excretory anuria, for example, in the obstruction of ureters uh, by stones, inflammatory edema of mucosa or proliferation of the malignant tumors. It is usually uh, uh, associated with the strong, very strong pain because of the distension of the renal pelvis and ureters. Excretory anuria is often attended by a renal colic. And this slide demonstrates another classification of uh, anurias. The first one is prerenal anuria, renal anuria, and the last one is the postrenal an anuria. And prerenal anuria, when blood supply of uh, kidney is decreased, and renal anuria is due to kidney diseases, and the third one was postrenal because of the obstruction of the ureters or the lower urinary tract infections, tumors. Another disorders of urination, they are the change in rhythm of urination and the normally uh, daily diuresis uh, and night diuresis proportion is 3 to 1 or 4 to 1. And nicturia is increasing of the uh, nocturnal diuresis. This is uh, specific for heart failure or renal failure patients. Change in frequency, and uh, the normally urination frequency is 4 7 times per 24 hours. And uh, every time the amount of urine is 200 and 300 milliliters per one urination. And uh, this urea, this is the frequent or painful urination uh, with a burning or stinging sensation. Uh, the, for example, this is uh, may be found in patients with cystitis. 
uh, is strangurea. It is frequent, painful, and difficult uh, urination. Uh, also found in patients with uh, urethritis. Uh, polycurea. This is the frequent micturition. This is more than seven times uh, in 24 hours. Uh, it may uh, accompanied by polyuria as well. Uh, but in cystitis, in prostatitis, uh, in inflammation of the prostate gland, uh, it uh, never uh, accompanied by the um, oly polyuria. Uh, then oligocuria, this is the rare micturition. It can be uh, either accompanied by oligocuria or uh, not. Changes in uh, concentrated ability, they are the hypostenuria, specific gravity of urine is uh, usually decreased in these cases. Uh, isuria or isuria, this is the uh, equal intervals of urination with evacuation of about equal proportion of urine. And isostenuria, the specific gravity of urine is monotonous. The, all these three conditions are uh, specific for uh, chronic and severe, uh, also sometimes the acute kidney diseases. Color of urine is uh, another symptom of the urinary system disease. It can be changed from milky uh, to the brown, and the, the causes of this change are shown in this slide. The next step of subjective examination is anamnesis morbi or history of present illness, and the questions are shown in this slide are very well familiar to you, and uh, the sequence of these questions are familiar also, and it's important to know the when and where, in which condition this, uh, did the first signs of disease appear, and what was the onset of disease, also the first signs, course of disease, and the what was the uh, examination, previous examination results, and the treatment before the admission to the hospital taken, and what was the result of the previous treatment, and what is the reason of the patient's visit. When questioning the patient with urinary system disease, it is necessary to establish the connection of the present disease with previous infections, tonsillitis, uh, scarlet fever, this sequence is especially important for acute glomerulitis for diagnostics of this disease. Uh, also, past history of disease of kidneys and the urinary tract. Uh, taking some poisons and some drugs, uh, some antibiotics, and transfusion of incompatible blood. And the next step of subjective examination is past history or anamnesis vitae or the patient's life history. Special attention should be given to the factors that might provoke the present illness and uh, have effect on its further course. First is the poor housing or uh, working conditions. Presence of the current or previous genital infections. Uh, presence of absence in the past uh, lung tuberculosis. Also chronic prurient diseases, as osteomyelitis or bronchiectasis. They can be cause of the amyloidosis of the kidney. When examining woman, uh, very important to remember her pregnancy and ask questions about her pregnancy and previous pregnancies. And sometimes the current pregnancy can aggravate some chronic diseases of kidney and we, uh, can cause the so-called nephropathy or uh, toxemia of late pregnancy. The risk factors also should be considered uh, in this part of anamnesis. Uh, the as bad habits, smoking and alcohol overuse, uh, presence of diabetes, obesity, arterial hypertension, and the older age, age of the patient, uh, cardiovascular disease, collagenosis, the light tuberculosis, uh, and other diseases. Uh, of course, a family history of kidney disease. 
The general inspection starts from the assessment of the patient's general status, consciousness, position and posture, which gives the idea about the gravity of the patient condition. Very grave condition with loss of consciousness may be due to the severe diseases of kidney, uh, for example, in uremic coma. Uh, the condition may be satisfactory or moderate in uh, milder cases. It is necessary to pay attention to the patient posture in bed. It may be active, passive, or forced. For example, in perinephritis, the patient may lie on his side with the leg flexed, bringing the knee to the abdomen in the affected side. In the presence of the renal colic, patient uh, is restless, tosses in bed, and cannot find their living posture. Convulsions are also observed in patients with very severe disease in uremic coma, also in nephropathy of the pregnancy. The appearance of patients with severe and uh, acute advanced renal disease is quite specific. The face is pallid, swollen with edematose eyelids and narrowed eye slits. Uh, this uh, is so called facies nephritica. The patients with more pronounced signs of pathology, uh, the edema affects the upper and lower extremities and trunk, and this condition is called anasarca. Uh, the color of the skin also a very important sign in uh, renal disease. Edematous skin in chronic nephritis is pallid because of the spasm of the skin, uh, vessels and anemia. Uh, which is an uh, important sign of this disease. Uh, when inspecting the patient with chronic nephritis, it is uh, possible to observe uh, scratches on the skin and coated dry tongue. The odor of ammonia can be felt from uh, the mouth of the patient. This is the fertile uremicus. Nail changes, uh, including the brownish discoloration or or uh, or white nails uh, can be found in patients with uh, chronic kidney disease. This is the sign of the chronic hypoalbuminemia. In a local inspection, the distension of the loin from the enlarged kidney or pernephritis, uh, also distension of the uh, bladder as a suprapubic um, enlargement can be observed. Also, scars uh, in these areas can be found after the renal uh, tract uh, surgery or in iliac fossa after the transplant surgery, catheter uh, for peritoneal dialysis or small scars in the midline can be found in patients with kidney failure, renal failure, but uh, inspection of the abdomen and uh, does not usually reveal any noticeable changes. The next step of objective examination is palpation. The posterior location of kidneys and also absence of anterior approach to them makes palpation of kidney difficult. Weakness of abdominal wall, pronounced weight loss can be resulted in slight ptosis of kidney and this makes them accessible to palpation. A uh, normal right kidney may be palpable, especially in thin, well-relaxed women. It may be slightly tender. In this case, the lower pole of kidney is palpated, and uh, in normal subjects, it is rounded. But the result of palpation can be only reliable in considerable enlargement of kidney, at least uh, one and a half or two times, or the displacement by a tumor, or in cases of uh, high degree nephroptosis. Bilateral enlargement of kidney is observed in polykystosis. Palpation of kidney can be performed in vertical, horizontal, or elbow knee positions of patient. Every method has its own purpose. During palpation of a patient in the lying position, his legs should be stretched and the head placed on the low pillow, and abdominal muscles must be relaxed. Uh, this palpation is carried out uh, by abrasov strasheska method, and it has four moments. The first moment of palpation is uh, position, uh, placing of the physician's hand. The physician stands by the right side of the patient and places his left hand under the 
patients low in and slightly below the 12th rib with the fingertips uh, placed near the spinal column. The right hand should be placed on the abdomen slightly below the corresponding costal arch and perpendicularly to it somewhat outwardly to the rectus abdominis muscle as you see on the picture. And the second moment is formation of the artificial skin folder in upward direction. And the third moment is a gradual dipping the tips of fingers. As you know, um, this is the third moment of abdominal um, palpation. And of the right hand into the abdomen and on, on expiration on a maximal abdominal wall muscles relaxation. And the patient is asked to relax the abdominal muscles as much as possible and breath deeply and regularly. The physician's right hand should press deeper uh, with each of expirations to reach the posterior abdominal wall. The while the left hand presses the lumbar region to meet the fingers of the right hand. The fourth moment is palpation of the kidney. When the examining hands are uh, as close to each other as possible, the patient should be asked to breathe deeply. The lower pole of the kidney, if it is slightly descended or enlarged, descends and reaches the fingers of the right hand. The physician feels the kidney. He presses it slightly uh, to the posterior abdominal wall and uh, slide his fingers over the anterior surface of the kidney and feels the lower pole of the kidney. In considerable uh, ptosis of the kidney, both poles and anterior sur surface of kidney can be palpated. If the kidney is palpable, the following should be assessed, uh, the shape, size, surface, and tenderness, mobility, consistency of the kidney. Uh, by manual palpation of kidney can also be done in the patient uh, different sides, right or left sides. The second picture shows position of the physician's hand uh, while palpation of the uh, left kidney. This ballotment palpation or Guillaume signs uh, is used to detect the ptosed or floating kidney, an enlarged kidney, or mm, it may be uni or bilaterally, uh, in hydronephrosis, in large renal masses, in polycystic kidney diseases. Here the right hand feels the kidney, while the fingers of the left hand strike rapidly in the lumbar region, in the costovertebral angle. And the fingers of the right hand, uh, in this case, the feel vibration of the kidney. In distension of the renal pelvis by the accumulated urine or pus, liquid uh, fluctuation can be felt during palpation. Uh, palpation of kidneys by Botkin. Uh, during palpation, patient stands facing the physician who sits on a chair. Uh, the abdominal muscles should be relaxed and the trunk slightly inclined forward as it's shown in the picture. Uh, palpation can be used to diagnose ptosis of the kidney and three degrees of nephroptosis can be distinguished. In the first degree, uh, kidney can be palpated, it's ren palpabilis, an inferior pole only uh, palpated only. The second degree is movable kidney or the ren mobilis, the entire kidney can be palpated. Uh, it can be easily displaced. And the third degree is wandering kidney, the ren migrans. The kidney freely moved about all the directions to pass beyond the uh, vertebral column in the side of the other kidney and sink uh, downwards. The last two cases, uh, patients have feeling of heaviness and uh, sharp side flank pain and that radiates in the groin and the nausea, vomiting, high blood pressure. Also, in standing uh, position, they have abdominal mass feeling and hematuria, proteinuria, palpation, and percussion of urinary bladder. The bladder cannot be examined unless it is distended uh, above the symphysis pubis, which is usually found in 
urinary retention. And percussion is helpful in assessment of urinary retention, which is a common clinical problem and is not easy to detect only by palpation. Uh, before palpation, it would be better to find the borders of the bladder. Percussion can be useful to check for dullness and determine how high the bladder rises above the symphysis pubis. When considerably distended, it can reach the umbilicus. Uh, but how to carry out percussion of urinary bladder? The first, as it's shown on the picture, the finger pleximeter is placed horizontally uh, parallel to a pubis on anterior abdominal wall at the level of the umbilicus or slightly below it. And a quiet percussion is performed from top to down on anterior midline in the direction of pu the pubis. If urinary bladder is uh, full of urine, there is dullness on percussion uh, in this region. If it is empty, the tympanitic node can be detected. Uh, some clinicians suggest to use auscultation percussion in the bladder uh, to detect this condition. When considerably distended, the bladder may be palpable and uh, dullness can be elicited um, over the bladder, but in overweight and obese patients it may be problematic to perform and to get desirable clinical information about the size of urinary bladder. Uh, as suggested by Dr. John Guarino, a distended bladder can be detected easily and quickly by auscultative percussion. Uh, in this examination, patient is supine and doctor places the bell above the symphysis pubis in the midline and percussion is performed with the pulp of the finger of the physician's free hand beginning above the umbilicus in the midline towards the bell place. The upper border uh, is indicated by sharp change in the percussion note and it becomes louder. When the bladder is empty, the percussion note does not change until the rim of the bell place is reached. And then uh, palpation can be performed and on palpation the dome of the distended bladder feels uh, smooth and round. It should be checked for tenderness as well. Uh, then the next step is palpation of ureteric points and palpation of the anterior surface of abdomen and uh, lumbar region in some cases enables to determine presence of the painful points connected to the kidney and urinary tract diseases. Uh, three pairs of anterior ureteric points are uh, distinguished. First is subcostal point, as it's shown on the picture, at the anterior end of the tenth rib. It is called also a hypochondriac point. It corresponds to the renal pelvis. The second is superior ureteric point, is at the end of the rectus abdominis muscle, at the level of the umbilicus, and it corresponds to the superior third of the ureter, a medium ureteric point at the intersection of the biliac line and the vertical line passing the pubic tubercle and it corresponds to the medium third of the ureter and two pairs of uh, posterior ureteric points also distinguished. First is costovertebral point. This is the angle formed with the inferior edge of the 12th rib and columna vertebralis and the lumbar point. This is a second point at the in intersection of the lumbar muscle and the 12th rib. Pressure in these points in normal condition is painless and it becomes sharply responsive at the pyelonephritis, uh, paranephritis, uh, in kidney stones, uh, tumors, and tuberculosis of kidney. Percussion of kidneys and auscultation of renal arteries. Uh, it should be mentioned that uh, the percussion of kidneys from anterior abdominal wall in healthy subjects is impossible because they are uh, covered by the intestines which gives tympanitic cell on percussion and dullness can be only determined if uh, the kidneys are enlarged, markedly enlarged.
And a much more uh, informative method for examination of kidneys is tapping. The physician places his left hand on the costovertebral region on the patient's loin, as it, shows, uh, it is shown on the picture on the slide, and his uh, right hand uh, taps with a moderate force on the left hand. If the patient feels pain, the symptom is positive. Uh, this symptom is called Pasternatsky symptom. Pasternatsky symptom is also positive in uh, nephrolytiasis, in paranephritis, uh, but it's non-specific uh, because in inflammation of the pelvis, also in neocytes, in radiculitis, it's positive as well. So this decreases its diagnostic significance in assessment of kidney diseases. Auscultation of renal, uh, renal arteries, uh, this is diagnostics for kidney disease and is used for detection of pathology of renal arteries. It may be, it may be in um, congenital or acquired uh, stenosis of renal arteries, in, for example, in atherosclerosis. The systolic murmur of renal artery stenosis can be auscultated in lumbar region in a costovertebral angle and on, or on the anterior abdominal wall in points uh, placed 5 cm superior and 5 cm lateral to the umbilicus. And all points of uh, abdominal auscultation, it's uh, as the examination of renal artery as well as aorta, iliac arteries and femoral arteries are shown on this slide. And the last part of our lecture is uh, supplementary examination of kidneys and urinary tract. This slide demonstrates the basic investigation methods of patients with suspected kidney and urinary tract disease, and I will give more detailed information on some of them. Uh, urine examination or urine analysis is a very common test. It's relatively inexpensive and uh, easily available. It is non-invasive and can provide useful information on urinary system disease. It's performed by collecting the urine sample about 30-60 milliliters uh, in a sterile container and collection of midstream is recommended because this sample is less likely to be contaminated by uh, epithelial cells and bacteria. The first morning sample is the best uh, sample for microscopy and urine analysis. Uh, this is concentrated urine because of urine remained throughout the night uh, in the urinary bladder and uh, it contains increased concentration of chemicals and uh, bacterial and also cellular elements. Urine must be remained in the bladder for eight hours to, con to be considered as a first morning sample. Depending on the purposes of examination, different uh, samples also can be used. Uh, for example, 24 hours of uh, urine sample can be used uh, for measurement of urea, creatinine, sodium, uh, glucose, and hormones. Uh, there are also different ways of uh, sampling. For example, suprapubic collection of the urine is done for patients who cannot be catheterized and the, this, in this way the sample is collected by the needle. Uh, catheter collection of urine and this is done uh, for patients who are bedridden and cannot urinate. This slide demonstrates contents of urine, uh, the organic substances in organic substances and other substances and uh, also it shows, uh, represents the uh, steps of urine analysis as mm, microscopic, chemical, microscopic, bacteriological studies. The urine sample must be sent within one, two hours of in, for investigation to avoid the growth of bacteria and dissolution of cellular elements and casts. And macroscopic study includes assessment of uh, physical properties of the urine as the appearance, amount, uh, the color, cloudiness, uh, smell, specific gravity, uh, acidity, 
Microscopic exam, uh, this is another part of examination, involves viewing several drops of urine under the microscope to reveal bacteria, red blood cells, white blood cells, and other elements. Chemical testing is used for assessment of presence of contains of blood, protein, and uh, bacteriological study is used for revealing infection of kidney and the urinary tract. And the uh, reference or normal values of urine analysis is demonstrated here. And it uh, would like to give the brief information about the dipstick test. For this test, plastic stick with strips of chemicals uh, are used and when dipped into the urine, uh, these chemicals uh, on the strips change their color and indicate the presence of the certain substances. Dipstick uh, urine analysis is convenient. It can be used even at home, uh, but uh, also for initial assessment. They give mostly quantitative information, uh, but it should be remembered that false positive and false negative uh, results also can occur. It was mentioned that color is one of the macroscopic features of urine. Color of urine depends on the presence of physiological pigments as urochromes, urobilinoids, and on its concentration. The normal color of uh, urine varies from straw yellow to orange yellow. Uh, this slide demonstrates the different colors of urine depending on the pathological processes and different conditions. One of the most commonly found symptoms in urinary system disease is hematuria. It may be overt with bloody urine or microscopic and found only in chemical testing. In macrohematuria, bleeding may come from any site within the urinary tract. It is important to determine location of the bleeding source. A three glasses test can be used for this purpose. Patient urinates in three containers. Macrohematuria in the first portion suggests bleeding from the urethra in all three portions from bladder, from kidneys or ureters, and uh, in the last portion from urinary bladder or prostate gland. Microscopy of the urine sediment can reveal leukocytes, erythrocytes, and uh, epithelial cells. Erythrocytes in the urine can be changed and unchanged. Changed are mostly um, found in patients with acute nephritis and glomerular nephritis and renal infarction. Unchanged is the specific for patients with um, urinary tract disease as uh, stones or um, tuberculosis. And the urine of healthy individuals contains a very small amount of leukocytes, about 1 and 2 in vision area. If the number exceeds 5 and 6, it is called leukocytorrhea. And three types of epithelial cells are distinguished. The first is the squamous epithelium. This originates from the genitalia and urethra. Uh, second type is uh, round epithelial cells or transitional epithelial cells. The presence in the diseases of the pelvis and bladder and tubular or renal epithelium cells. There normally this is absent, but if it is found in the urine, uh, it indicates acute or chronic affection of the kidney. Microscopy of the urine sediment can reveal the casts and crystals and the casts are cylindrical bodies formed in the lumen of the distal tubule particularly in the collecting tubules casts are protein copies of tubules and the appearance of cylinders uh, in the urine sediment is sign of organic uh, renal diseases and crystals can be found uh, in healthy individuals and in patients with inclination to the kidney stones as well as in the patients with kidney stones. Of course, it depends on the concentration of crystals in the uh, urine. Of course, urine analysis provides valuable information on condition of kidney and urinary tract, 
However, some major moments in assessment of renal function must be highlighted. Evaluation of renal function is important in the management of patients with a kidney disease or pathologies affecting renal function. They identify the presence of renal disease, monitoring of the uh, response of kidneys to treatment, and uh, determining the progression of disease. As markers of renal function, creatinine, blood urea nitrogen, and uric acid, uh, electrolytes, and the cholesterol are used routinely. Several studies have suggested the usefulness of markers such as cystatin C, B trace protein. The normal values of all these markers are shown in the glomerular filtration rate is the best overall index of kidney function and it is a rate in milliliters per minute at which substances in plasma are filtered through the glomerulus. In other words, this is the clearance of the substances from the blood. The characteristic of an ideal marker uh, uh, are the follows. First, it should appear endogenously in the plasma at a constant rate. It should be freely filtered at the glomerulus. It can be neither reabsorbed nor secreted by the renal tubule. It should not undergo extra renal elimination. Are there no such exogenous marker currently exist? Endogenous markers are used and uh, the reference method for assessment of glomerular filtration rate is injection of uh, inulin. Other exogenous markers are isot radioisotopes. The inconvenience associated with the use of exogenous markers, uh, especially they, are, uh, they should be used in specialized center and uh, also it is difficult to assess these, these substances. Uh, these factors uh, encourage the use of endogenous markers as endogenous marker creatinine is used. The, for this examination, collection of urine over 24 hour period is, but preferably uh, five, five or uh, eight hours is required. And uh, this equation is shown on the uh, right upper corner of this slide. But it should be mentioned that uh, this is not accurate method. Uh, for assessment of glomerular filtration because uh, it should be corrected by the body surface area, age and um, race and as well as uh, due to serum creatinine is not an ideal marker for assessment uh, of glomerular filtration. New equations uh, in glomerular filtration rate estimating are uh, suggested they are the modified diet in renal disease MDRD and chronic kidney disease epidemiology collaboration equations uh, are suggested they are uh, shown in this uh, slide. These equations they are very easy to use and they are very easy estimation of glomerular filtration because there are no collection of urine and no use of exogenous materials uh, required. However, they uh, use serum creatinine and they are also affected by the issues around the serum creatinine measurements. And uh, cystatin C is suggested as an endogenous marker in the uh, recent years. The equation with addition of cystatin C also elaborated and it is shown on the uh, bottom of this slide. To ease the measurement of glomerular filtration rate, online calculators have been created and uh, this slide demonstrates one of them. Uh, this calculator, this program provides three different equations for assessment of kidney function. In order to calculate glomerular filtration rate, age, gender and the levels of creatinine, cystatin C or both must be entered and depending on which equation will be used. In accordance to the result, stage of uh, chronic kidney disease can be estimated and uh, general management options and advice will be offered by the program. The uh, useful biomarkers for renal function are albuminuria and proteinuria. Normal urine protein is less than 150 mg per 24 hours. Albuminuria is estimated as albumin in urine 
uh, between 30 to 300 milligrams per 24 hours. Uh, proteinuria is uh, urine protein more than 300 milligrams per 24 hours. And uh, there are three types of glomerular proteinuria, tubular proteinuria, overflow proteinuria, and albuminuria is uh, found in the early stages of the kidney injury. This is the marker of uh, detection of uh, nephropathy in diabetes, in dependent marker of the cardiovascular disease, and the marker of the chronic renal impairment. And a brief information on kidney functional test and Zimnitsky test. It's characterized condition of renal concentrating and excretory ability. In order to make uh, correct measurements, patient must avoid taking much fluid. Uh, the urine samples are collected each three hours in separate containers uh, during uh, 24 hours. There are eight portions. Volume and specific gravity of the urine is measured in each portion. What are the advantages of this method? First is possibility to measure diurnal diuresis and detect the presence of polyurea or oligurea. Uh, possibility to measure separately daily and nightly diuresis and possibility to determine diurnal variation of the specific gravity and its maximal value. Normally, uh, the diurnal diuresis is about one or two liters and the amount of urine in each portion vary from 50 to 250. Uh, the daily diuresis exceeds uh, nighttime diuresis and specific gravity vary from uh, 1010 to 1025. If the maximal mean of specific gravity exceeds uh, 1020, renal concentrating ability is considered to be normal. Uh, this slide demonstrates uh, one example of this Zimnitsky test. And we reach the last part of our lecture. And this slide demonstrates instrumental examination, a very wide range of invasive, non-invasive examination methods, uh, which are used for diagnostics of urinary system disease. I would like to give the brief information about some of these examination methods. First of all, of course, the widely used and common uh, ultrasonography. This is non-invasive and um, relatively inexpensive uh, method and it has advantage over x-ray techniques avoiding ionizing radiation and intravascular contrast medium. In kidney diseases this imaging method uh, is a method of choice uh, for measurements and for intervention of procedures for example uh, for renal biopsy, checking for pelvic dilation, for detecting and characterizing renal masses, uh, diagnosing of polycystic kidney diseases, and when using uh, Doppler to demonstrate the renal arterial perfusion. The uh, second non-invasive and very uh, commonly used examination method is the computer tomography, CT scan. Uh, this is the first line investigation in cases of suspected uh, ureteric colic. And this is uh, also useful to stage renal tumors and detect low density uh, stones, for example, uric acid stones, and evaluate the retroperitoneum for tumors, uh, assess the severe renal traumas, and visualize the renal art arteries and veins by, by using CT and geography. Magnetic resonance imaging, also very widely used, uh, but relatively expensive examination methods, but uh, it comprises uh, an evolving group of techniques which are potential for allowing optimal non-invasive evaluation of many abnormalities of urinary tract. For example, MR urography is uh, clinically useful uh, for uh, evaluation of suspected urinary tract obstruction, hematuria, and congenital abnormalities, as well as the surgery surgical altered anatomy. MRI is used, uh, this is the um, very informative in renal, prostate and bladder cancer staging and demonstrate the, the renal arteries by, by magnetic resonance uh, angiography.
and by the end of the lecture and a couple of words about renal biopsy uh, this invasive method is carried out under ultrasound control or CT or MRI control in specialized center and requires interpretation by experienced pathologist uh, the special needle is used to take the one two centimeter sample and the renal biopsy is used for investigation of nephritic and nephrotic syndromes, kidney tumors, acute and chronic kidney disease, hematuria of the urological investigations and renal graft dysfunction. And that's all for now. Thank you for your attention.